I remember being in my bedroom in my grandmother's basement thinking, dang, I done messed up my whole life and it's never going to get better. Granted, I was only 23 and I had a lot more life to live and I still have a lot more life to live. But at that moment, I felt like I really messed up. I had just graduated from Boston University and I finally got a full-time job. I was no longer temping, but I was only making $13 an hour. And I kept thinking, why didn't I just choose a different major in college? My friends had went to the business school. They, um, some were engineers, some were on that pre-med track, that pre-law track, and their lives just seemed set. As compared to me, I decided to study public relations because it just seemed easy and something like I could handle. But my career prospects were abysmal. And here I was, 23 years old, really wanting to move out of my house. I wanted to be like everybody else. I wanted to have my own apartment. I wanted to have freedom. But I couldn't because I couldn't afford to live anywhere besides at home. My savings account wasn't growing. I wasn't making progress on my student loans. I was just you know, getting my paycheck, shopping, going out, ha um, hanging out with friends, but that was about it. Nothing else was moving forward. And I realized something had to give. Hi everyone, this is a Focus Spender and welcome to my channel. On this channel, I talk about how to get out of debt, stay out of debt, and invest so that you can build generational wealth. So I really wanted to move and I wanted to move into this building that my cousin lived and it was a co-op, or it is a co-op, I should say, and it's run through a governmental program. So the price is really based off of your income. And at this point, an apartment became available and the apartment to get in was $5,000. And I thought, great, I have $5,000, I can move. But the problem was I only had $5,000 and I had that money because my grandmother basically gave me an early inheritance. So even though I had that $5,000, the sensible side of me realized if I just took all of that money and paid to get into the apartment, I wasn't gonna have any money to furnish the place, to buy groceries, to pay the monthly maintenance, nothing. And I thought, this is a really bad idea. Don't do this. You should have an additional $5,000 to have some type of cushion so that you won't like just destroy your life even further than you already have. So I decided that I was gonna wait to apply and I was gonna save $5,000. But that meant I had to reevaluate my whole spending and look to see if I had the money to even save. And at first glance, I was like, oh, I can't save $5,000 because when I looked at my spending, I was spending more money every single month than I made. And the reason why I was doing that is because I just wasn't living on a budget. I didn't even ever consider a budget. I was like, I got paid this amount of money, time to go shopping. But I was spending, like I said, more than I was making every single month. So once I did that reevaluation of my spending and I came to the conclusion that I was spending more money than I made every single month, I decided, okay, let me come up with a plan to save this $5,000. Meaning if I could just save 250 every paycheck, about $500 a month, I would get to my $5,000 within six months. So that was my plan. I got myself a budget and then I created a cash flow for myself. And so I don't know if I even understood the concept of cash flow or if I had ever even heard the term. I was basically creating a budget that allowed me to time my expenses. So I knew when money was coming in, I knew what bills I could pay when so that I would always have that 250 every single paycheck to put directly into my savings account. So once I did that, I just basically started living off that plan. So I lived at home. My only bills were my student loans, a credit card, and my cell phone. Nothing else. I didn't pay for cable. I didn't pay for groceries. I didn't pay for anything else. So six months later came and I had my additional $5,000. So I had saved $5,000 in six months, just like I planned. I was thrilled over the moon. And I went down to the management office to go ahead and apply for an apartment and there were no apartments available. I was devastated. I knew it was hard to get into that building, but in my mind, I honestly felt like, well, this is it. I'm never gonna get into this building. I'm never gonna actually have enough money to pay rent in New York City because my whole thing was if I just have this $5,000, my maintenance, my monthly maintenance or mortgage basically was going to be 
pretty much tailored to my income. So I wasn't gonna have to pay that much money. But if I took that $5,000, paid first month, last month, security deposit on a New York City apartment, and then has to pay rent on top of that, I would have the money for the first and last month and security deposit. I was not gonna be able to afford rent in New York City. And I was just like, why am I even trying? Why am I even trying? But thank God I did not give up. I did not stop saving my money because if I had, the story would end completely different. So since I was in the group of saving, I was like, you know what, I can do this. I could just keep saving money until um, they call me for the apartment because there's no real reason to stop saving. Um, I can use that extra money to furnish my apartment. I'm gonna need the money, might as well keep doing it. So fast forward an additional 12 months, I finally got the call for the apartment. And when I stopped to really pay attention to my bank account, I realized I saved $13,000. So now instead of having $5,000 from the money my grandmother gave me to $10,000 because you know that five and the five that I saved, I had $18,000 in the bank. And I was like, how in the world did I do this? I saved $13,000 on my $24,000 a year salary and I was honestly amazed. I was honestly amazed and that was the first time I had done anything with such focus. And that's really when I became a focus spender because I was like, okay, I have this goal. I'm gonna create this budget around this goal. I'm going to use this cash flow document to help me fulfill the goal and to follow the budget. And then I did and I just blew past any anything that I could imagine. Like I was so far ahead of what I could imagine. And then that allowed me to move once the apartment became available. And then also I was heading into grad school and um, I was gonna be working less hours at my job. And so I was able to use the excess money um, to help supplement my reduced income every single month. And then also it allowed me to take out a little bit less in student loans. So I just took out the max and government loans and like the extra few thousand dollars that the loans weren't gonna cover, I used the cash that I had been saving to help me pay those um, tuition fees. Now, if you want to create a budget and um, a cash flow document that's going to help you achieve the goals you set forth in your budget, be sure to click in the description box below for my budget and cash flow template. I have a three month budget and cash flow template for like three or four dollars that you can download and you can use to help you on your money goals as well. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye bye.